Hey everybody, this is Noah with Learn Meta Analysis, and over the past few weeks, I've showed you how to create a local large language model connected to your entire academic paper or Zotero database. I've shown you how to do the same thing using Mistral in case you wanted to use a top leading model rather than your local computer resources. And now I wanna show you how to do the exact same thing, but using Google Gemini. Okay, so Google Gemini offers a free API key, just like Mistral does, and it will let you connect to open web UI. So let's go through all of the things really quickly that you're gonna to need to make this work. First and foremost, you're gonna need Olama. I have a video that is linked down in the description on how to install that. Second, you're gonna need open web UI. I have also put a link in the description on how to install open web UI. From there is where I am assuming we are starting today. So we need to do a little bit of prep work. The first thing that we need to do to prepare is we need to download Snowflake Arctic Embed 2 or whatever your favorite embedding model is. I've been using Snowflake Arctic Embed 2 for a little while with my uh, Zotero database and it's been working awesome for academic papers. So I highly recommend it as of now because it's just been working really, really well for me. So to download it is really easy. All you do is click this little button here to copy that command on a PC. You would open up command prompt and on a Mac, I'm assuming you open up terminal. I don't have a Mac to test it, but on a PC, I just copy paste that in and then I'd hit enter and it'll download that model for me. I already have it, so I'm not gonna hit enter, but that is how you do that. It should download relatively quickly because it's not a particularly huge model. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna jump back to Open Web UI and we are going to set up our document. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the little person in the top right and then we're gonna to go to admin panel. And from here, we're gonna to go to settings. Next, we're gonna click on documents. Okay, so the first thing is a content extraction engine. I leave that on default. For OCR, I turn that on. Bypass embedding and retrieval, I have that off. I actually want my information to be put into a vector database because I have so many papers that I don't think the context windows would be anywhere near large enough of these large language models to take in all the content from like 1400 papers. So we're using RAG. So what we're doing is we're going to use that embedding model, Snowflake Arctic Embed 2, to create embeddings in a vector database from all of our papers. So uh, like I said, I leave bypass embedding and retrieval off. Then for text splitter, I leave it on default. I use a 3000 chunk size with 100 overlap. Moving down to the embedding model engine, I change this to Olama. By default, it is sentence transformers, but I change it to Olama so that I can use Snowflake Arctic Embed 2. Then under embedding model, I put Snowflake Arctic Embed 2, just like this. Embedding batch size, I have one, and then I have both of these next options off. I have tried out both of these, but especially the hybrid search. And this essentially lets you do re-ranking. And this did not work well. It did not perform well for academic papers in my testing, I should say. Okay, so for top K, I have that at 20. Rag template, mine's quite different from the original. So I'll put a link in the description to the rag template that I'm using. Um, then everything else just saves the same. So, or stays as the default, I should say. So go ahead and click save if you've never done this before. The next step that we're going to do is we're gonna to go to our workspace. We're gonna click on knowledge. And then over here on the right, we are going to create a new knowledge base by clicking the little plus. I'm just gonna call this one, two, 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 just because uh, this is a demo and I don't really feel like having the brain power to come up with a creative name. I switch visibility to private just out of habit and I'm gonna click create. Now, the next thing that you wanna do is actually link this to your specific folders. So, and when I say your specific folders, what I mean is either your Zotero database or your just giant folder that contains all of your academic papers that you wanna link into this. It can be any folder that's on your computer. So let me show you how to do that and connect it to Zotero. So the first thing that you wanna do is click on this little plus and then click upload directory. Now, when you do that, you can see that my, I already actually have mine pulled up here, right? Cause it says Noah Zotero storage, but let me show you where that's actually located. So on my computer, I usually end up starting at the highest level. So that would be this PC. From here, I click on my C drive, which is my local drive. I then go to users. I go to Noah, which is my account. I scroll down to the bottom. I double click on Zotero. I then click on storage. And within the storage folder, you're gonna see a bunch of folders like this. 
right? And so this is actually the level that you wanna click select. Do you wanna keep all of those there and just click select? I'm not gonna actually do that right now because if I, if I do that, it's gonna take hours to upload my files. So I will say that for me on my computer, I have an i5 and I have an eight gigabyte GPU that using Snowflake Arctic Embed 2, it took probably four or five hours to fully upload my 1400 papers and put them into the vector database. So make sure you plan for that. If you just wanna test it out, maybe upload like 10 papers first and it should be much, much faster. Okay, so what have we done so far? We got open web UI up and running. We set up our, our um, knowledge database and how we want things to be set up for RAG. And now we have actually uploaded all of our papers and put them into a vector database. So what do we do next? Next, we need to get the actual function that's gonna let us use the Google stuff within open web UI. So what we're gonna do is we need to open up a new chat so that we can click over here on the right on the little person and then go to the admin panel. Then at the top, we can see this functions button, click that. So you can see that I have two functions here. These are what we're gonna actually do, okay? So I'm gonna delete this first one just so it's out of the way. Um, this is the one that's actually working right now and this is what lets me access all the Google information. So inside of the Open Web UI community, I found this function called Google Gen AI with thinking. And this is what we are going to use to make this work. So you can get this by logging in and clicking get, or I didn't want to log in. I, I don't have a login there. I, I don't like logging into things if I don't have to. So I just copied this code by clicking copy. Then I went back over to open web UI and over here on the right, again, it's got this plus button under functions. So I clicked plus. Next, I went here. I highlighted everything in the code block and just deleted it. And I hit paste to paste in that code. I called it whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to call it Google demo. And then on function description, I'm again, just gonna put Google demo. And then I'm gonna click save. It's gonna ask you to confirm that you trust this code. This is on you. Do you trust this code? Yes or no. Um, if you don't, it's not gonna let you run it. Like if you hit cancel, it's gonna bring back here. Um, I trust this one, so I'm gonna hit confirm. So now we're here. I have my Google demo function. Over here on the right hand side, if we click on valves, we can see that we need an API key and it's got some other options here, right? So first things first, let's go get that API key because without an API key, it's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna close this and we are going to go to Google's AI Studio. So when you go to AI Studio, it's gonna look something like this. And in the top left, it has get API key. Now they do offer a free tier of the API. And so all I did was I clicked create API key and it gave me one. And I'm not gonna actually go through that process of clicking it now because then it's going to show you guys what my API key is. But after you click that get API key, it should be a very simple process for you to get an actual key. So when you do that, you can know it's free because over here on plan, for me, it says free of charge, right? So you can set up a paid one too if you prefer, but I wanted mine to be free. So I made sure and quadruple checked that this said free of charge. If I remember right, when I first set this up, um, it didn't necessarily say free of charge immediately. I think what it did was give me an API key and then I had to click to a different screen. And then when I came back here is when it actually said free of charge. So I would just, you know, if it were me, I would double check to make sure it says free before you actually start using it. So anyway, get your API key and keep it private to yourself. You don't wanna share that to other people, but get it copied onto your clipboard so that we can drop it into the open web UI. So I'm just gonna reopen the valves and under Google API key, click on default and just paste in your API right here. The second thing is if you want it to act, like if you use a thinking model, like a reasoning model, and you wanna actually see it say, see it where it says thinking or something like that. Down here with emit status updates, you can just change this to on or off. I have this on just because I thought it was kind of interesting, but it's really easy to turn off or on if you want to. You just come into these settings and turn it on or off. So feel free to experiment around with that. Um, and when you're done, make sure you hit save. I am not going to because I don't have an API key in there. So very last thing, you've installed this function and you've entered your API key. What do you have to do next? Next, we need to click this little button over here on the right to enable it. So you just do that and then you're ready to go. So once you enable it and you go to new chat, 
you should see up here in the top left, if you click on this, you should have all your different Google models that are available to you. Now, I will mention in my kind of playing around with this, I did find that a couple of the ones listed are deprecated and don't actually work anymore, but a bunch of them do work and all of the current ones were working just fine for me. So as an example, we can try Gemini Flash 2.0 and say, uh, what is the largest breed of dog? I'm kind of curious. Ah, because it could be height or weight. Interesting point. Okay, so Gemini 2.0 Flash works great. Uh, let's go down to, they have this uh, reasoning model that they're e experimenting with right now. So you can see Gemini Flash 2.0 thinking. So I'm going to change to that. And now I'm going to do what we set up that Zotero database for, right? Is I'm going to hit hashtag and then I'm going to choose my Zotero one because that's the one that has 1400 papers in it. And I'll say explain social agency theory in relation to pedagogical agents. And I just want to point out, you don't have to use the thinking model for this. You can use whatever model you want. I just chose thinking because I wanted to show you guys what it looks like when you use a reasoning model from Google. Okay, so we say explain social agency theory in relation to agents and we gave it our collection to do rag with. So you can see now it says thinking completed. It took about five seconds. It gives us our full text papers here in case we wanna read them. And now it just spit out our answer. So social agency theory suggests that learning is enhanced when social interaction is created between, yep, that's great. Um, as a social actors like it leads you and get, yep, also accurate. And it gave us one in text citation, although the year is a little bit funky. Um, so essentially by incorporating social cues, these agents can prime the social conversation schema. Great. Um, in turn activates, yep, this is all great. And this is a good citation. This is, I don't know about the page number, but this is the main first paper on social agency theory and multimedia learning. Okay, so this is how we do it. Uh, I guess I'll show you one more model just for completeness. I'll show you one of the pros. I, do they have 2.0 pro yet? Yeah, 2.0 pro experimental. Let's see if that works. So I'm gonna say hashtag Zotero and I'll say, what is a pedagogical agent? It's gonna find us an answer here from our database. Awesome. So as you can see, it does seem a little bit intimidating to set up the Google API because we have to use that function. And if you're like me, I'm not a coder. So like I was kind of worried when I first saw that and I was like, I don't really understand this. But to be honest, what I did is I took that code and I put it into a large language model and I had it explain to me each step of what it was doing. And then that made me feel better about running it. And so once I did that, I found it was actually very, very easy to get Google Gemini connected to open web UI. So one other thing that I want to point out to you here, just like I pointed out with Mistral, this is not keeping your documents local, right? So your vector database is local, but you're still sending data over the web via an API to Google in this case. So one way that you can tell is it has this little link here, right? And this lets us know it's external. As compared to if I scroll down, you can see some of the models that I have locally on my computer. They do not have that little link next to them. That's how you can differentiate between the models that are being called externally or the ones that are hosted locally. So in the future, I plan to do an analysis looking at some of these Google models to see how do they perform compared to Flash? How do they perform compared to Dwayne, my local model that I've been running with Granite 3.1? So I'm hoping to get the video put together in reasonably near future, but I wanted to show you guys this first because I just thought it was really cool to be able to now be able to harness my entire Zotero library in relation to the Gemini models. This is just as cool and exciting as it was to me using all of the Mistral models, right? So now I have a way to do this. Um, so the big question in your mind is that maybe going through it is like, why not just use Notebook LM? Well, Notebook LM has limitations to it in terms of the number of papers and things like that. This does not. We can put as many papers into our vector database as we want, at least to my knowledge. I mean, I guess it's gonna probably depend on your patience level and the amount of space on your computer and that sort of thing. but. Even though it took four or five hours to upload all 1400 of my articles, I have all 1400 articles in there and now I can reference them with local models, I can reference them with Mistral models, and I can reference them with Gemini models. And I don't have to pay for any of it. All of this is using free APIs or local large language models. And to me, that is very, very, very powerful and empowering tool as a researcher. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Please let me know your thoughts. If you try this out, leave a comment down below. Let us know what your favorite model is for working with academic type work. Uh, if you found this interesting, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. Thank you guys and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.